Hey guys, Jill here from Ask a Vet Tech. Today I want to talk to you about a lick condition, or as we call in vet med, acrolic dermatitis, or more commonly known as a lick granuloma. Sometimes you will see these on dogs or cats, and it is licking between the front of the leg, between the elbows and the toes. Commonly it's found between the toes on certain breeds. It is an easy access spot. Um, it can be caused from a past injury, a medical condition, anxiety, an allergy flare up. There's lots of reasons that it happens. This here is Dory and she adores the ground that my son walks on and he has to leave for work between Monday and Friday. She will continually work on this spot in the same spot over and over and over and it is very, very irritated as you can see there. It's red, the hair is broken, and she is kind of uncomfortable from it. So we are going to take a good deep look at it, see if you know we see any reason why she's licking it. But I am going to look at all of her legs, both front and back, make sure that we are not missing anything, an injury, a bug bite, a cut, a sore, a scrape. She still wants to lick it even though I'm touching it. And as you can see, she's not in pain, but she just doesn't want me to do it. The leg feels fine to me. The hair around it is kind of wet and kind of tacky, a little bit stiffer. She's actually breaking the hairs off um, by her constant licking. The constant licking can trigger a release of endorphins, which are naturally found in the body. The licking can bring on the pleasant feelings so they keep licking it, or other reasons are like boredom, stress, or separation anxiety. You need to find the root cause. So sometimes the vet will want to do a skin scraping, a culture test, look for fleas, maybe an x-ray of the bone, some blood work, or parasite testing. Treat the wound and find out the root cause. Because if not, it'll just continue to come back. Most of the time, they'll want you to put an e-collar on, or the cone of shame, which will prevent the dog from licking it altogether. Getting it clean is number one priority. I personally like to use here at home uh, a little bit of Dawn dish soap and some nice soapy water. I don't want the bubbles to be on the skin at all. I just want the soap to stay in the sink, get the rag nice and clean, wring it out really well so that we can get that clean. Because a bacterial infection is often secondary to this lick granuloma because the more they lick it, the more it's irritated, the more it oozes, and it just continually breeds bacteria. A staph infection can often accompany the lick granuloma because their mouths are not clean, they lick it, it gets on there, then it oozes a little more, then they lick it a little more. It's just this vicious cycle. A staph infection can easily take over a large area in 24 hours. So you wanna get it clean, you wanna get it dry much before you put a bandage or anything on it. Getting it dry is super important, especially because you're gonna cover the skin with a bandage. You wanna make sure that sucker is dry. I like to use these sterile pads. Um, they're latex free. I make sure the area is nice and dry. I stick the pad over top of it. It'll kind of stay there a little bit because of the ooziness. As soon as you clean it, it starts to ooze again. This here is like a flex wrap. You can get it at a farm store. Um, they call it vet wrap. It is a stretchy elastic piece of material that I like to put over top of the wrap. You might need extra set of hands for this. The thing you want to make sure you pay attention is, is you put your finger right over top of where you've wrapped it so that you don't make that bandage too tight because if it's too tight, they're going to lick it again. Wrap it again. I put my finger right there, put my finger, wrap over, and then I pull my finger out, which makes kind of a, like a loose area around it. You do not want it to be tight and you absolutely want to make sure that the toes are not pinched because if the bandage is too tight, the toes will swell and then huh, lo and behold, they'll start licking again. I recommend using some scissors here. I have ripped my fair share of bandages and it's pretty easy for me. Just kind of mush it on down and make sure that the not over the elbow because if it is, it's very irritating to them because it pulls the hair and just it's an unnatural movement. They're gonna act like their leg is broken for a little bit. They're completely fine. It's just something that changes their gait. And then off she goes. She's like, oh mom, it's broken, help, help, help. Right here is where I would put the e-collar on her so she cannot lick or chew the bandage off. Um, she's giving me some thank you, thank you mom kisses and um, we're just gonna get that cone on her here in a minute. And as you can tell, she still needs some more loving. If the spot is very large, I recommend getting her into the vet, making them 
check it over. Sometimes they'll shave the hair in that area just to make sure that we can see everything, get it all cleaned off, keep the hair away so that then keep her from licking it, it will go away. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something useful today. Remember, I'm here for you. You're here for your pet. Till next time.